Let's talk about images a little bit. We're looking at multimedia. <clears throat> and the first thing you need to know, uh, you know, whenever we look at multimedia, we could keep going more and more and more in depth into any of the different media elements, but we're just going to touch on each of them a little bit. And so I want to look at images. And the first thing you need to know about images is that there's two, two types of images. There are images that are known as raster images, and there are images that are known as vector images. Raster is also sometimes known as bitmapped, bitmap, bitmapped images. And uh, this picture here kind of shows you the difference between vector versus raster. <laughs> so you might be saying to yourself, well, why in the heck would anybody ever use bitmapped or raster images? They look pretty horrible, whereas the vector image looks, uh, you know, much sharper, much clearer. And if we were to zoom out on this, so I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard and move my scroll wheel. And you can see when I zoom down to a much smaller image, like right now I'm at 25%. Well, the raster image looks much better. It looks much better. But as I zoom in and come back up to 100% here, this raster image, this bitmapped image, starts to do something called pixelate. It becomes pixelated. And the vector image is always going to hold its clarity, no matter how much I zoom in on it. And so here's another image which kind of compares vector on this side this time and raster on the other side, so they flipped. But again, you could see uh, when we zoom in on a raster image, we start to lose quality and clarity. It starts to become pixelated. And on the vector image, no matter how much we zoom in, the vector image always stays sharp. <laughs> Let's get back to 100%. There we go. Uh, and so if you go to Google and you search for raster images, uh, you'll also get vector images, vector graphics, raster images versus vector images, and raster images, bitmap images, the way they work, and if you remember we talked about coding schemes, uh, the way bitmapped raster images, bitmapped and raster are interchangeable, the way bitmapped and raster images work is that they are mapping colors to each of the bits, each of the bit, bits on a grid. And so, you know, here's an example of like, right, check out this flower. So there's that flower. And if we zoom in on that flower, you can see it's made up of a bunch of little squares of different colors. But when we look at that flower from far enough away, uh, it doesn't look pixelated. And so here's another example of an image that's created by having a bunch of little bits mapped to the different little squares. And uh, we can create, you know, the semblance of a fish. And in fact, if we were to scroll out on that fish, right, the farther we scroll out on the fish, the better that fish starts to look. Uh, come back up to 100% here. So that's, uh, that's raster and bitmapped images versus, you know, uh, vector images. I'm just looking here. I thought I had vector. Here we go. So if you search for vector images, you see stuff like this, right? So graphics, icons, you know, drawings, things like that. Here's another example, comparison of vector, right? As you zoom in, seven times magnification versus bitmap. Bitmap, you get the pixelization or raster, right? Vector, you do not. So bitmap and raster are interchangeable, those two words. All right, so we've got bitmap, raster images, and we also have uh, vector, vector images. And what we said about the bitmap raster images, raster basics here, is that they are colors mapped to a grid, right? And so we fill in fill in those colors, and that's how we create images. Whereas, uh, and that's raster graphics, so again, you can see that here, the colors map to a grid. Uh, whereas graphic, vector graphics are uh, computed by a mathematical formula. So if we look at this one here, this image here, no matter how much we zoom in on this uh, vector image, that's always going to maintain its clarity, right? And this is an SVG file. And now, let's see what happens actually if we zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. And we're getting some pixelization. So that's being represented as a, a bitmapped image on the web. Uh, probably, probably. Let's see. Save image as. PNG, yeah. It's, being represented as a, uh, as a PNG, which is a raster bitmapped image. All right, but if we were to download that file and open it in, in uh, some sort of a vector image editing software, we could zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. And this image is made up of mathematical formulas when you create the image. 
And those formulas just recalculate. So that line is always going to stay smooth no matter how much I zoom in on it. Um, so there's a bunch of different image file formats out there, right, when we talk about images. And if you look on Wikipedia for image file formats, we have raster formats, and then we also, which are the bitmap formats, and then we also have vector formats down here. And one of the main vector formats is SVG. Some of the main raster formats are JPEG, which maybe you've heard of before, GIF, and PNG, right? Those are some of the main raster bitmap formats. There's also RAW, there's also TIFF, there's also BMP. And so if you are shooting a professional photographer, right, and you're shooting photographs for professional photography, you would shoot in RAW. And these different file formats have different properties. And so the raw file format captures a ton of data, a ton of data, but its file size is going to be really large. And so all of these different types of file formats have different properties. JPEG is really good for images, right? Really good for images like pictures and things like that where you have gradations of color, but it doesn't have any transparency. GIF is a, is a much smaller file size. And, uh, and uh, it does have transparency, but it only works with eight bits of color. So 256 different colors, right? Two to the eight. If each little square uh, will store eight bits of information, so each square, right? Each square stores eight bits of information. So we're having eight zeros and ones here represent a color, eight zeros and ones here represent a color, eight zeros and ones here represent a color. So if we have eight zeros and ones to represent colors, Right? Just like if we only had one, one bit, we could represent two things because that bit could be on and off. If we had two bits, we could represent four things because they could both be off, they could both be on. This one could be on and this one could be off or vice versa. We could represent four things with two bits. That formula is 2 to the n. So if we have 2 to the 8, we have 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. So if we're using eight zeros and ones to store the color, right? We could have 256 possible colors. So GIFs are 8 bits. That's one of the properties of GIFs is they are 8 bits to store each color in each square, 8 zeros and ones. And so there's only 256 possible colors that could be used versus like JPEG could be true color where, uh, let's see here, let me just make sure I get this right. JPEG 8 bit or 24 bit color images. So 24 bits to uh, represent the color in each one, which means that you're going to have millions and millions and millions of possible shades of colors. And so JPEG is really good for shades of color in images, uh, and GIFs are better for smaller file sizes, right? PNG, on the other hand, JPEG and GIF are both owned by somebody, intellectual property, and so though they've never made anybody pay a license fee, there was some concern about, well, if I use those images, will I like, will I eventually, will that person who owns it eventually say, you now need to pay me for using my file format? Uh, so PNG is sort of an open sourced version of a file format, which, uh, and I'm just going into this detail so that, you know, if you ever end up in web design or graphics, you have a little understanding. And, and PNG is, uh, is, is open source. It's not owned by anybody. PNG is also good for gradations of color, and it provides transparency, as does GIF. And GIF also provides animation. So, you know, a lot of uh, different stuff there to think about. But if you go on the web and you search for a comparison of image file formats on the web, uh, you can see some information about GIFs, JPEGs, and all that. So here would be like, you know, this, let's see what's going on here. Two example images I will show how when to use each one. You may already be familiar with that. So like this might be a GIF since we have transparency. And this is probably a JPEG since we have a lot of gradations of color there. So there's the JPEG. And you could compress the JPEG, right, to different compression levels in image editing software like Photoshop. And as you do that, the clarity, the file size will go down, but so will the clarity also because you're throwing data away. So here you can see, look at that, right? Like if we bring this into a GIF, there's fewer colors, and so we start to lose some of the quality there in the shades right there. GIF compression, right? Um, and here's, yeah, so it's just got different qualities. The images just have different qualities, PNG 24. And, uh, 
you just have to, if you get into this field, play with the image editing software. and You get to know the different images and what their characteristics are and which one is right for which situation. Uh, the GIF animations, this is kind of what they look like, right? So here's a GIF animation. Here's a GIF animation. Here's a GIF animation. Here is a GIF, but not an animation. Nothing going on there. What about this guy? Is he animated? There we go. So those are GIF animations. You could animate GIFs. Um, I'm just looking to see if there's anything else I want to say here about GIFs or about raster bitmap images versus uh, vector images. Um, the last thing I want to add is that there's something called compression. And when we talk about correct compression, compression can either be, I'm just looking to see if I have uh, information on that here. Compression can either be uh, lossy or lossless. Let me see if I can find that. Lossy or lossless. So here's a comparison of JPEG compression uh, at a high level versus a low level. And you can see the image gets a little bit blurry, right? So we compressed this file, we threw away some of the image data. And this is a this is a lossy, lossy compression because once you throw away that data, you've lost it. You're never gonna get it back. So it's lossy. Versus like lossless compression, like GIF is lossless compression, meaning the data is never, never lost. The data is never lost. So let me just see if I can find that here, because I did see it a second ago. Lossy versus lossless compression. You'll he often hear the terms lossy, lossless compression. A lossless compression algorithm discards no information, right? You lose nothing. It's lossless. It looks more efficient. It looks for more efficient ways to represent an image while making no compromises in accuracy. In contrast, lossy algorithms accept some degradation in the image in order to achieve smaller file size, and you're ne never able to get that information back. A lossless algorithm might, for example, look for a recurring pattern in the file and replace each occurrence with a short abbreviation, thereby cutting the file size. In contrast, a lossy algorithm might store color information at a lower resolution than the image itself, since the eye is not so sensitive to changes in color of a small distance. Uh, so loss, loss E, loss E right here, loss E means when you throw away, you're throwing away image data that you can never get back when you compress. Lossless means that, uh, yeah, you're not throwing it away. Loss E is going to give you smaller file sizes. Uh, lossless is going to be retaining more data, so it's going to be larger file sizes. Um, so that's a little bit about those. And if you read read the descriptions of Wikipedia about these different image file formats, you see here it's 8-bit palette for GIF, 256 colors. It's for graphics, relatively few colors, simple diagram shapes, logos, cartoon style images. You know, so it works really well with this cartoon style image, only 256 different colors. Where'd we go? GIF, GIF, GIF. And uh, the GIF format supports animation, still widely used to provide image animation effects. It also uses lossless compression that is more effective when large areas in a single color and ineffective for detailed images or dithered images. It also allows transparency versus JPEG, 8-bit uh, to 24-bit to store the image depending upon what you want to go with. And it doesn't provide, uh, it doesn't provide transparency and it provides lossless image storage, but the lossless version is not widely supported. Uh, so generally speaking, it's lossy. Yeah, that's what I've always known about JPEG. Um, so it's lossy. You lose the data when you throw it away. So that's JPEG. Here we have RAW, and then we have PNG down here. And uh, PNG allows transparency. Uh, and uh, the loss, lossless PNG format and the lossy formats like JPEG. So lossless PNG format is best suited for pictures still under addition. So PNG be lossless, JPEG is lossy. Just some information for you to know about images. <laughs> Might be more information than you ever wanted to know about images. The main thing you want to take away, vector is, uh, you know, is going to be graphics that are calculated mathematically. So no matter how much you zoom in on them, they are going to maintain their clarity. And, uh, and, uh, and then raster bitmap are going to be images that, um, 
you know, are will pixelate if you zoom in on them. Pretty much everything you see on the web is a raster or a bitmap and uh, vector versus raster. There we go. Um, and uh, I guess the last question I'm left with is like, can you, because when we looked at vector, this was actually even, you know, this was actually even uh, a PNG, right? Save image as PNG. So that's even a PNG on the web. So I imagine, uh, you know, SVG is used for like a vector image is used for creating images, but then when you're going to use them on the web, uh, you convert that to a file format which is better suited to the web. So this would be a good GIF. This would be converted to a GIF on the web, even though it was created in Adobe Illustrator, which is used for editing vectors. When we wanted to use it on the web, we turn that into a GIF. Since we don't have, well, you know, maybe we go with the JPEG because we have some color gradations here, right? Versus, uh, you know, not so much in these. You know, there's still gradations there. What about Google? Google's uh, logo, if we could save image as on that, it's a PNG image, right? So they went with PNG over a GIF. And, uh, and that, I think, would lend itself really well to a GIF. But, um, you know, the... Uh, the colors, maybe there's shades of color in each of those things. So if we were to actually zoom in on the Google logo and look at it closely, do we have shades of color? We don't. So maybe they ended up going with PNG over GIF just because of the intellectual property issue, right? Where PNG is open source, GIF is owned by somebody. And, uh, and I think GIF would have worked fine here but they ended up going PNG. All right, so that's a little bit about images, probably way more than you ever wanted to know, but that's a comparison between vector images and raster images, and uh, that's the main thing you should know, is that there are these two types of images, vector and raster, and then there's a bunch of different image formats out there, uh, like PNG, JPEG, and GIF, which are all raster or bitmapped images, and, uh, and that bitmapped images are the ones we uh, normally use on the web. So PNG, GIF, and JPEG are the ones you normally see on the web. And they have different properties. So if you ever get into graphic design, you will make the determination of, uh, of what image to use based upon, you know, what image you want to be, be showing to somebody. That's a little bit about images.